As we continue our praises to the Lord, as we sing, Lord, I lift your name up. faithful disciples and, and attentive listeners. listeners. Strengthen us with your Holy Spirit that we may be ever awake, alert as we as worship, worship, as, as we live, as we follow where you lead. In, In your, your blessed, blessed name, name we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is found in the book of Luke 19:28-40. After Jesus had said this, he went go on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village of you. As you enter, you will find a tithe there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Sing it. Just say this. The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the colt? 
They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the coat, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God, joyfully with a loud voice, all the deeds of power they had seen. Saying, Blessed, Blessed is the, the king, king who comes, comes in the name, name of, the of the Lord. Peace in heaven, in heaven and glory in the highest, highest heaven. Of heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. I answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Yes, this is the great festive day for us to welcome the coming of the King. And thank you for that wonderful song, a message with inspiration and power. And now we declare that, yes, let us join our hearts and be in those that have come to, uh, to welcome and the King of Kings and said, Hosanna, blessed is he that, who comes in the name of the Lord. So again, praise be to God for this day. And we welcome you all this morning to all of you who are in the Zoom, our guests and visitors and our faithful uh, brothers and sisters of members, faith community there. We are grateful to uh, have you and we embrace you in the love of the Lord, as well as for us all here today, uh, here gathered in this place, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I hope and pray that we uh, will be uh, touched by the presence of the Lord. And again, not only to express the heart that welcomes the King of Kings in our midst, but for him to touch our lives and change us. And may God continue to uh, uh, be the Lord of your lives. And may our song today and our heart will say, change my heart, O God. Let it ever be uh, true. You are the potter. You are, I am the clay. So let us all be in that spirit. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm really uh, in the high spirit uh, these days because of the things that we see around us uh, here in our church. Uh, uh, we have a lot of things that we have done and for our the leadership that we have the ministry is alive and we see a lot of wonderful works <laughs> our hands did make and uh, i'll let you be the one to witness uh, what's happening here so you, I, I am inviting all of you to look around and see for yourselves uh, for the things that uh, uh, we have done from our landscaping it's already uh, has it has already started and uh, with uh, uh, what else you can just look around and, and see and somebody will usher you to those places proving that this church is alive and the one who reigns is really the Lord our God, and who is our King, who is our uh, Lord, our Master. So this is the Sunday that starts our Holy Week. It is such a week, but then there are things that we see, you know, in this uh, week. It is a mixture of emotions uh, from the, uh, you know, from this, uh, saying, long live the king, Palm Sunday. And then with the crowds that have followed, not only just today, Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and through the streets of Jerusalem. And to the intimate, uh, close uh, relationship, the, uh, the, the bond that these disciples and others uh, during the uh, last supper on Thursday and you know what the uh, angry response of the announcement that one of his closest friends you know him Judas will betray will betray him until the prayer of Jesus in the Gethsemane garden on that Thursday night so this is the final week of Jesus on earth. And we want to see closely and experience the, the range of emotions that we yearn to find ourselves at the foot of the cross on Friday. So just to let you know that we have something to do, a service, a prayer service on Thursday We'll have uh, communion and I think washing of the feet, uh, the, foot, uh, the feet. And plus, on Friday, uh, we have the 
uh, uh, Holy Friday service. And both services will be at 6.30 in the evening so that all of you will, be, uh, will have that space uh, from work, those who are coming from work, you have that chance to come and join us, uh, plus the rest of us. So, yes, this is a time to witness how, how this Jesus Christ remaining days really paved the way for us to see the sacrifice, the love of God, the sacrifice that ultimately was uh, consumed in the uh, foot of the cross. So let's begin this Palm Sunday. If we try to look at this Palm Sunday, the scripture reading that has just been read to us is just a portion of what the Gospels did show. And we try to look into the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and John, including our reading today. They have different look and emphasis on this a particular Holy Week and this Palm Sunday. If, for example, four of us in this room, in this gathering, we're all sent to the same place in that parade, and then we're asked 20 or 30 years later to write down our recollections of that event, then we would certainly focus on different events or aspects of our experience based on what we saw and what we have witnessed to whom we were offering our thoughts. So this is the nature of these gospels and this one of which is today, the four versions of the life and ministry of Jesus. And in its version is a unique way of uh, writing it or telling it so we get the whole picture of what this is all about so i'd like to share you the significant uh, moments and significant uh, things that we can see in this palm sunday and here in luke we have the donkey the unridden donkey that's been uh, untied and the story tells us that uh, the lord uh, the uh, they they got this donkey and uh, the owner of the donkey said who who you know who asked you to to do that and he, and this disciple said the lord needs it and then they uh, they got the donkey the colt And then we have Matthew. Yes, he, uh, he also uh, told that, uh, yes, the Lord needs it. So they untied the coal. And yet, but there's still an, another an additional part that says about, you know, Jesus went to the temple and he saw that there were selling and buying you know there was a business just like when you go to the mall when you go to the market they're selling things and jesus got mad and he turned upside down those tables because they he says that you are making this place a robber's den so here today we have animals which the Lord does need. We have a multitude of people shouting Hosanna or what does Hosanna say or explains, save now. Hosanna, save now. Branches and cloaks spread on the ground and Jesus entering the city only to then go and <laughs> wreak havoc in the temple. So these are the pictures that we see. So what? What does this mean to us 2,000 years later? Well, it means a lot because we really do find a great deal of tension in the image of Jesus riding into the city on that unridden cult. 
And then the image of Jesus turning over the tables and running people out of the, the holy place. So I'd like to have that kind of mix, mixture, picture of this gospel and of Matthew. So Jesus was able to display those things that drew people to him then and now. His ability to tame the chaotic tendencies and then bring peace to those hearts or to those places where there had been no peace. Where peace was not an expectation. A young cult. Jesus had the powerful presence of peace. Animals, beasts of burden do not become that by nature. There is training. But Jesus did it. There is that inherent wild nature to overcome before the donkey can be of use. But one just like Jesus has the power of peace, the power to bring peace where there has been no peace. And the peace that he, that he gives has the power to change lives, break down barriers. It unites, not divides, only when not by force, when peace is offered. Peace that is being offered by Jesus is a peace that is given, offered out of love. Jesus Christ, one who came to comfort, to comfort to, to the ones afflicted and to those afflicted becoming comfortable. And Jesus with his humble presence because of his tough love, not only in Jerusalem, but today on this Palm Sunday, that tough love is still at work. So I am posing some reflection today to each one of us, brothers and sisters. What is something in your life that needs to be disturbed? In other words, what value of yours or habit or practice or addiction, what thing in your life would Jesus just absolutely say, You need to change. If he walked through your life today, what are those things that you feel that you think Jesus will, not, will, will be bothered in your life that needs to be removed, that needs to be changed? You know, it's hard, especially when we are, in a comfort, we are comfortable in our comfort zones. And it's, you know, no need to change because you feel comfortable. But if you think about this today, it's not a pleasant thought. You walk up today, maybe thought about it being Palm Sunday, figure the children would sing <laughs> Hosanna with a waving palm branches or us waving palm branches. And now you're being asked to consider what thing in your life does the Lord want you to change. You know, brothers and sisters, Palm Sunday is not just a party. It's just afflicting us in the comfortable places in our lives that make fun out of the things of our Heavenly Father. Now, today, to, he does that for four straight days in Jerusalem. And it got him killed. And if he does that to us today, will you and me still want to follow him?
And these are the ones that I would like us all to reflect openly, seriously, intentionally, honestly, with sincerity, with humility. And the next question, what is something in your life that is disturbed to which Jesus can bring peace? If Jesus, in other words, if Jesus can bring calm to, to an, an untamed cult, never ridden before, then should he not have the power to bring peace to the chaotic parts of your and mine lives? I don't know if you have been into places like, uh, you know, shut-ins or uh, assisted living. And there is a, a friend and who said, uh, he shared this story about him going to that uh, assisted uh, place. And he goes there to sing for the residents. They love hearing him because he brings his voice, the beautiful song, and his guitar. And they love uh, singing with, with him. So he said, I began by singing a couple of cross songs because it's, it's the Holy Week, being sensitive to the time of the year that it was. Well, there was a new man and his wife there. And the man spoke up after the first several songs and said, I want to sing Silent Night. I, and he kind of chuckled you know, kind of, you know, this is not, this is not the, the appropriate time to sing this, this song. It's Silent Night. It's Holy Week. You know, he, talking to himself and said in my sometimes quick voice, I love that song, but my guitar isn't able to play. That's what he said. Because it's between January and December. And then we all laugh and I sang a couple more songs. Then his wife spoke this time a little bit serious and louder and insistent and said, we want to sing Silent Night. Now he says that he's not kidding, he's serious about singing that Silent Night. So what I did is sing it, sing it. So we sang Silent Night, and there was another woman there for the first time who began to weep openly as we sang this song that obviously pulled the heartstrings and brought tears of comfort on her troubled soul. Isn't it great that the Lord whose birth brought peace to the chaos in, in Bethlehem can do that all year round? Seasons in and seasons out. For every person, every age, every time and every place. There is a part of us that needs the calm and peace and comfort that only Jesus can bring. Not coming from this world. And especially literally right now we need peace. And what's happening in Ukraine and Russia, it's tearing people's lives apart. I shall say that war is evil. And this is not the work of children, the children of God. So we need peace in all in the form that Jesus offered. It's only that peace from the Lord Jesus Christ that can heal this brokenness that we are having, especially during this, uh, this kind of war. 
You don't have to live with whatever it is that is bringing chaos to your life. The peaceful power and presence of Christ is offered to us all today. It's our choice. But for me, I want this peace. from our, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he is the Lord of all, the King of Kings. But for me, he is the Lord of my life, the King of my life, that only the peace that he gives, it brings me hope and joy and a serene soul. You know the story of today, the moral story. Sometimes we need to be uncomfortable. Um, some, and sometimes we just need to sing Silent Night so that his peace can be ours. Let this be our song and this will be our heart as we go through this Holy Week for you and for me. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Now it's time for offering and tithe. Sisters and brothers, God's ancient, steadfast love is not a love that simply waits for us to stop wandering and return home. God's love comes seeking us, give us the gift of Jesus so that we may have life abundant. Our giving this morning whether we have been lost and wandering or secured and saved expresses our firm conviction that God is with us no matter what. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude, heartfelt commitment and praise. May the answer please come forward. Respond to your love with, with love, O oh God. We are touched by the story of the one you sent to save us. In, In gratitude and thanks, we dedicate our offering and our very self to the ones you care so much about. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated.
and uh, grateful to have uh, our pastor, Reverend uh, June Cowley, with us to minister to us today. Good morning, everyone. Happy Palm Sunday. We are so glad to be here together and to see one another, and we praise God indeed. Pastor, thank you for the message, and thank you for this wonderful worship service today. God is good. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> and all the time. God, God is, is good. good. So <clears throat> it's time for us to share our blessings, how God has touched us, and how God has blessed us this past week, as well as our concerns as a faith community. And so those in the Zoom, please feel free to share your gratitudes and your concerns so uh, we could hear you, we can see you as well. Pastor June? Yes, Ati Chideng. I think first of all, we, we congratulate you at the completion of your project. God has been good. You have been such an inspiration and support to us. And we know that this is, you know, for God's glory, but I've been, you know, we've been with you at the time that there was stress, school stress. We could feel those things. And we're just so pleased, just the goodness that you've given to us, God's goodness. And I just need to celebrate with you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ati Chideng. I didn't even think about it today, but thank you indeed. Those who do not know, I passed my doctorate dissertation defense two Sundays ago. So thank you for all those who have, uh, all of you who have been praying for me and those who have been journeying with me. Uh, I thank you so much. I really could not have done it without you all. And so I share the joy of completing uh, this uh, educational achievement. And so I will be graduating on the 28th. So <laughs> thank you again. God is good indeed. Thank you. Any other uh, gratitudes? Pastor June? Hold on. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Ati, At, Ati Nora just shared that uh, answered prayers for Ina's successful procedure last week, but we continue to pray for uh, a good results of that, uh, of that procedure. So we'll pray for that for Ina. Thank you, Ati Nora. Yes, Lil. Um, just a um, praise report, like Pastor said, but for those people who are in Zoom, they're not able to see what the church looks like. And I apologize, I was supposed to share some photos this morning, but I'm not prepared, obviously. But I just want to thank you, the, uh, thank the following um, people who participated in um, putting the garden together and continue to do so. The Kambe family, the Pasalos, uh, Jordan, Baluyot, Manang Yunis. And for those people who've donated towards it, Ati Joe, Manang Yunis, Sharon, and Richard Moy. So we still need a lot of plants, need a lot of succulents. So if you have some in your homes, please feel free to bring it and that we could plant it. And if you're not able to, we're also still taking um, donations towards this project. So it's a wonderful project and I'm really, really um, thankful to God and I praise God for all those people who've come together and um, uh, make this happen. So praise be to God to for everyone. Praise be to God indeed. Yeah. One, one more this. yeah, of course. <laughs> we thank you, Sister Lillian, and of course all those she mentioned who work together who contributed their energy their finances to have uh, this beautiful surrounding in our church now i mean these past two years have been so depressing because of covid you know we have seen so much losses and deaths and grief because of covid 
But to see these wonderful plants around our church is a symbol of life. That we are alive, as Pastor said, that our faith community is alive to see these uh, succulents, beautiful succulents. And such a beautiful transformation of our church yard is such a symbol of life. And we are grateful for that. And so please, uh, there, I saw that there's so much still spaces that need to be worked on. And so if you would like to contribute, uh, please do so financially, as well as if you have succulents or plants that you would like to share, please bring them to church. And, and let us know again when the next work is going to be. Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. So those who are free, uh, please come to church and, and put life around our church building. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, God is good all uh, the time. Any, any, uh, before I forget, today is Catherine's birthday. Yay! <laughs> Catherine, you are so, we are so blessed to have you. And I, everyone all just enjoys listening to your music. The, the way you play the piano is just so touching. What a blessing you are. And uh, we thank you for being here today on your on your birthday. <clears throat> yeah, God bless you. God bless you more. Any other? Uh, yeah, Joyce. Yeah, I, I know already the results of the test that was did they did to me when I was taken to the emergency due to my painting on the street. Oh. And uh, the results are all okay. Oh, thank yeah. God and thank you all. Thank you, Atenita, for sharing that good news. But we're sorry that you have, you know, you for your, we're sorry to hear your experience, but we thank God indeed that uh, everything is okay, that you're healthy. Thank you. God is good again. <laughs> Somebody says, was saying in the Zoom? Yes, it's me, Pastor. Yes, good Joyce. Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. And happy Palm Sunday. Mm. I'm here to uh, let everyone know that I um, this program or the outreach between the church and Department of Rehabilitation, we are going to have a table in one corner every second or third Friday of the month uh, during the food bank. So I will be there in that one corner and please spread the news to your friends and family. We're going to have this outreach um, program for people with disability. As you know, during this pandemic, we have been suffering with a lot of, you know, most especially mental problems. Mm. We all have this brain fog which is uh, called the long effects of COVID. And as a result of this, people have lost their job. Mm -hmm. People with physical disability are also encouraged to apply. And we have all the services for you, for job coaching, for job employment. Mm -hmm. Also to have, uh, to assist you with your mental or physical problem. <clears throat> to to send you to school if you have to be retrained. So if you have friends, families, and also the church members who would like to avail of these services that we have as an outreach for our church and also different Methodist churches, I have a, a table there every second or third Friday of each month. And I will be there to assist. And I have applications for you to apply. And um, God bless you. Thank you. Joyce, thank you. Uh, somebody is asking, what time will you be here on those Fridays? The food bank, I believe, is open at 7.30 in the morning. I so you'll be here then at that time. I will be there for that window for two hours. Right. Thank you so much for the information, Joyce. And, and yes, indeed, uh, thank you so much for, for facilitating this project through the church and well, as well as through the department uh, that you, uh, 
you know, that you are working for. So thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we will get more information from that as well. The Any past, other concerns? Had something. Yeah. Um, it's not only for adults. We also help students. We have the student services. Uh -huh. Disabilities, and we also sponsor them. Or if they eligible, we help them with their educational books, right. clothing, internship. Great, thank you again, Joyce. Uh, what a wonderful project! We really need to support this, and you know, uh, because this is another way for our community uh, to be a blessing uh, to those uh, folks, especially those who have disabilities. So, thank you. Any other uh, blessings, concerns? Yes. Uh Mm. Right. Son's uh, having a birthday this Thursday. Oh. I think it's Tommy or uh, Tim. And then for Paul, who is having a birthday, I think, in next week. So those are the things that they would like to ask for prayer for. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that news uh, from the Sheridan's family, Pastor. Talk about visitors. We have visitors here. Thank you for being as Anyone would like to introduce you? Yeah, Yes, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us with your presence today. And so we are grateful uh, to God for each one of us here. And, and it's wonderful that we could be together in person, but I encourage you to continue to practice uh, social distancing. I heard in the news that uh, the, the cases of COVID is increasing in San Francisco. So, uh, you know, it's still, we're still in, not, we are not still in the green zone, as they say. In fact, patients in, at UCSF are increasing as well uh, with COVID. So let's continue to uh, be, be safe and support each other and protect each other. Anyone else before we close with a prayer? Yes. The San Francisco Night Ministry. Carla, thank you so much. I was, I was wondering about that. I think uh, we are just so grateful for those who have volunteered, you know, to buy groceries for our San Francisco Night Ministries, to bring the sandwiches to the church, for these sandwiches to be distributed to our homeless brothers and sisters, uh, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the city. So thank you, thank you. And uh, is this coming Thursday? You'll be on this coming Holy Thursday. You are working and serving the Lord. And that is wonderful. Thank you, Carla, and for, yeah, for leading that and for facilitating that to happen. Anyone? Yes. There's a new family she decided to retire. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and congratulations for your retirement, Sister Ariselli. No more stress. We could see it in your eyes and in your face. <laughs> what a relief that is. So thank you so much for sharing that good news. So um, let's, let's close with a prayer. But before we close with a prayer, if I could add a little reflection for our uh, Palm Sunday today. I was just, when we were reading the scriptures, palms were not mentioned. In the scriptures, if you could look at the scriptures today, palms were not mentioned. It is only in the book of Luke that palms are not mentioned. You know, uh, when Jesus went into Jerusalem, 
you know, the people did not have pawns. What did they put down on the, on the ground? Is their cloaks. No pawns, but cloaks. And during the time of Jesus, cloaks was the most important part. It was the most important clothing for people. It's, it was very, very expensive because they used that to cover the, their bodies, especially during cold weathers. You could see that, you know, when, when Jesus went into Jerusalem, people laid down their cloaks, one of the most important possessions they have. And so in addition to what Pastor said about Jesus as the source of peace, during this Palm Sunday, what are we going to offer? What is the most important part of our life that we have to lay down to honor and to worship the King of Peace? May we reflect on that today. Isn't that interesting? Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we are so grateful again for this time that we could praise you and glorify you as we celebrate this Palm Sunday once again. And as the message has been proclaimed that you are our king of peace, the source of peace, Remind us once again that we are also your children of peace, that we are your instruments of peace, especially in this time where we encounter a lot of painful situations and events in this world. We are also thankful that we are reminded that in this Palm Sunday, that we are reminded to offer what we have, the most important possessions that we have to honor you and to glorify you. And of course, we believe that the most important possession that we have is our life. And so today in this Palm Sunday, oh God, once again, we offer our lives to you as our praise as our way of thanking you and glorifying you for what you do to us. Especially as we continue to reflect on this holy week, we are reminded of your suffering, of your death on the cross, so that your suffering and your death has become our life abundant, not only in this world, but in the life to come. For this, we are grateful. We are also grateful for, for celebrations that we have received today. We are grateful for the birthday of Catherine and for the Sheridan uh, family, those who are celebrating in their family, their birthdays, and all others who are celebrating their birthdays and other special events in their lives. Uh, Sister Aracilla's retirement, these are all good news and blessings that we receive through them. And we pray that you continue to bless these, your children, O oh God, and continue to sustain them with your love and grace and enfold them with your love and light and, and continue to make them blessings to their families and to our faith community and to us all. We also uh, pray now for uh, Ina. Uh, we are grateful that she had a wonderful, uh, successful procedure, and we pray that we, uh, that as they wait for the results of that procedure, that uh, they will receive uh, good results of that procedure and everything is okay. And uh, we also pray now for, uh, for Atinita. Uh, we are grateful that um, she uh, get, got results from, uh, from her test, from being, uh, from fainting on the street. We pray that you continue to bless her and help her stay well and healthy, O oh God. We pray for, um, for other uh, concerns that we have shared, uh, for our faith community, uh, for the ministries that we share together, uh, for every member of this church, O oh God, we pray that you continue to encourage us and inspire us to be uh, your instruments of love and grace and, and peace in the world today. And as we offer these prayers to you, Lord, we uh, offer this prayer also. And I would like to read this um, prayer of St. Francis as we conclude this prayer today. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, 
pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, glory. Thank you, Pastor, for that blessed moment that you ministered to us. With, uh, and uh, let us continue in our uh, worship for our closing song. Let us sing Hosanna as we are be being led by our praise team. We thank God for our praise team. That their commitments is there. Will you please uh, rise as you're able? And if this song really uh, uh, touches you, if you can relate to the song and in any of the things that we have done today in the message and ways that you see God is really uh, touching your life, if you want to respond, uh, you, you may come into his presence in his throne of grace and glory for prayer and if you want to uh, renew your relationship with one another you are being hurt and uh, forgiveness is hard for you and you have hurt somebody else and it's 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 hard for you to say sorry i think these are the things that need to be uh, looked upon and uh, uh, make make some kind of amen, uh, amen. and uh, as we do that you are uh, you're invited to come to the presence of the lord in prayer as we sing this song and even for you if you want to accept the lord as as your savior this is the time for that let us do sing this song
Lord, with that song, we look up to you as our King, our Lord. Thank you for the many chances, the second chances that you have offered to us. And by making your love so truthful, so reachable. And it is only through bowing down before you, humbling ourselves into your throne of grace and glory, that we'll be able, Lord, to receive it fully. Lord, as we look into this uh, Sunday, is a Sunday of uh, giving, declaring our uh, uh, and affir affirming ourselves that we are yours and you are ours. And it is a way for us to respond in Jesus offering himself for us as he enters Jerusalem to give the best of what we have. Thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity. And in giving our lives, we are here, Lord, openly for you to transform us, to change us. All the things that you don't want from us, O oh God, hatred, jealousy, and other things that are not pleasant to you, oh God. We come into your presence, cast these things into your presence and make us a new being. And that we can be a better persons called to serve, be a servant to others, and minister to those people who are in need of you. Thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity that we can come. And for us, Lord, to 
know that we are not alone and you are with us all the way. So be with us this day and into the rest of this Holy Week that may we see our lives are being changed and you are God at work in our lives, transforming us. So may we go into the world with peace in our hearts, ready to make a big difference so that the world may know that our God is the God of all. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our worship is over, but our response continues. Let love of God be with you. Offer it to others who are in, in need. Make peace. Forgive and be forgiven. Go in the name of Christ until we meet again. Amen. Thank you.